an extraordinary career, I suppose, uh, in many ways. Um, I think you were one of the, you know, everybody claims you no. as being South African all of a sudden, when, you know, um, in, the, in the sense of, you know, that we, we don't have that many big stories, um, or, you know, famous types that, are, um, that emanate from here, or right. you know, their base was here. So I think it's, uh, it's equally, um, you know, pr- um, uh, proud, you know, we, 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 we are as proud of you, I think, as, um, as for you and your family. Oh, that's good to hear. Thank you. <laughs> but um, we had to talk about what well, I suppose. And, uh, and, um, but when I saw the movie last week, it actually left a, um, it's one of those few movies that I've seen, certainly in recent times, that actually leaves you with uh, with a sense of how how hard, um, in some respects, it may have been to tell the story, because it's a very personal story. Right. Um, was that, you know, uh, Besides it being fast, I'm sure for you, was it was it a difficult story to tell? Um, oh, it's a story that I've long wanted to do for you know for years and years. I've, I've wanted to write about this particular um, run up to independence and that changeover that happens, um, and also deal with the sort of the fact that this um, that British expats were so hermetically sealed off from really what was going on, um, and the putting on the, of this production. Of Camelot, yes. for the visiting royal was somehow more took up more of the energy and concern than the real thing that was going on, which was you know, Swaziland regaining its independence. Yeah. Uh, so I suppose it seemed both poignant and ridiculous to me. Mm. Um, and writing about those people, and I think any group of people in the caught on this sort of historical quicksand where um, they're overtaken and past their sell-by date yes. um, is inherently funny. Mm-hmm. So um, that juxtaposed against what was going on in my family, you know, dysfunctional family, I thought which was a good, um, there were two halves of the same coin as it were. Mm-hmm. And now that it's out, and now that uh, you, know, you have an audience that people have seen it, I mean, is, it, is it different for you now in some way? Would you that was that? fantastic that it's, that it's been successful, mm. you know, after, as it's taken so long to get made as mm. an independent film. Mm. Um, the fact that you know, it's been so well received all over the place mm. um, has made all that worthwhile. Yeah, because it's <laughs> otherwise it would be terrible. It seems in a way that, that it's uh, not to say, I mean, you, you, you have a very su- you know, successful career. Um, but in some respects, when I look at your career, it, it, it seems that it's been it's been hard work. It's, you know, nothing has come come easily. I mean, even I'm sure even to to direct and, and have this movie released um, took a lot of you. Too. Yeah. Well, I think that I don't know who said Beth Davis or somebody said that just the fact of surviving a career in show business in it is in itself um, feels like an achievement because. Although from the outside, I'm sure it looks like something just goes from do re mi one job to another. Um, the reality of actors' lives isn't isn't like that. I'm, you know, even you know, if you look at Tom Cruise, <laughs> my movie opened in New York on the same day that uh, Mission Impossible did, and he arrived despite being you know the world's number one box office star, the movie costing you know 100 and something million, uh, and mine cost seven million. Uh, he arrived by helicopter, went on a hired a whole subway train, then went on uh, uh, what do you call it? Um, fire engines, yeah. closed down Manhattan for half a day. And you think, well, this is this is somebody still trying to sell a movie. Yeah. You know, yeah. bottom line, you take all that fancy lardy do away from it, and that is what he's doing. Just on a larger scale. So, I suppose the point is that you never stop. Having to work at it, mm. um, you can't, you can't take anything for granted. Well, I, I certainly can't. Yeah. So, well, thank you. Would you like to? No, nothing. Thanks. But yes, as you say, I mean the the, the art remains the same. The subject matter will be different, but the yeah. the, the end result is the same. I mean, uh, for you, I think just having this more, yeah, this all made in itself, as you say, is is yeah. The fact that it's done, even if, if nothing more happened with it, that is, is the success. Yeah. Um, once you've achieved that, then it becomes something else. And yeah, it's that's the same with every role you play. So, yeah. You know, you're as good as your last movie. Absolutely. You know, but, um, but, but this in particular, um, I don't know why I was, I mean, I think I was touched by it on a lot of levels. I think a lot of people will be because 
think there's so much of your story. Right. There's so many, you know, literally millions of other people's uh, mm-hmm. you know, in, in, in many instances. So I think you, you know, not only do you serve, you know, if anyone could accuse you of being self-indulgent of doing a book on your life, mm-hmm. um, it, it serves the greatest good, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, which I think well, I think that, you know, what I realized very well when I was writing it was that the public face and private show of what goes on in families mm-hmm. um, is universal. So addiction, adultery, divorce, mm-hmm. um, acne, adolescence, amateur dramatics, mm-hmm. first love, lost love, unrequited love, loss, loss of a loved one, all of those things. At some stage in people's lives, um, people are affected by those things. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, what, what was extraordinary was to be in the USA and Canada where there's no immediate colonial connection in the way that there is obviously in England, South Africa or Australia mm-hmm. with this story. Um, and it, you know, it obviously worked for them and resonated with them. So, and I know that that has to do with the fact that it's essentially about family. Mm-hmm. It must be fascinating in a way because people are so different and cultures are so different, as you say. You yeah. Can learn aspect, it's that big aspect, but then you can go to a place as far away as Canada and get a response. Oh yeah. I mean, I'm sure for someone like you, getting that feedback because you have no no way of knowing going in. No. You don't. You know, there's no formula or anything. Uh, taking the you know the Tom Cruise example, there's um, you can have all the elements of what makes a good story, and yet it either takes or it won't fly. Yes, yeah. you know there's there's no rule to say if you do it this way, it's going to be a success. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the same as applied to choosing your roles as well. Because, um, again, it would seem to me that the space that you occupy, um, there's a obviously a deep seated respect for it, but you also not only challenge the roles, but you challenge some to play roles that are almost unexpected. Right. Um, you know, well, yeah, I think the things that, that most anybody who's in the so-called creative arts, mm-hmm. you know, as you know, you, you try not to do stuff that's just a repetition or a clone of what you've done before. Mm-hmm. Um, and that becomes more of a challenge the longer you're around because you get pigeonholed or the screen baggage that you, that you bring with you um, inevitably affects what kind of parts people think think of you for. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, the departure to write and direct something was an incredible liberation, really, because when you're in charge of that whole process, rather than being to a hired hand, um, is very uh, attractive mm-hmm. to, to have tasted that. So this is the first of of well, I don't know many because you know films take so long. I'm you know 49 years old, so I you know I can realistically work out how many films at best <laughs> I could make. Um, but you know I've worked with Robert Altman three times. And well, he's 82 yet. and he's yeah. he's just directed a new film. So um, you know there are role models out there, people doing it mm. into their old age. Mm-hmm. And I mean that's the it, yeah, you can argue that you're you're actually the you know, in, in your infancy when it comes to... to that. Well, in Hollywood terms, no, no. very old age, yeah, really? you know, all, yeah. all the young bucks are, you know, mm. 25 to 30. Mm. And again, I mean, you, you know, you're English, you live in England, um, yet your roles, I mean, obviously you played in American productions, you played in British productions, you played in, in a lot of, um, you know, literally all over the world. Uh-huh. Um, is, it was the choice to stay in England and not, you know, become, you know, not move to LA and almost become... Yeah, one with the... Well, you make a choice. You know, I lived there for two years, 1990 to 92, not not by design, just by one job leading to another. But yeah. um, unless you... I mean, Charlie's Theron and Gary Oldman and uh, Tim Roth have become American. You know, they've, their, their nationality has been traded in to become you know, their screen personas are playing Americans. Mm. So, and that's a choice that, you know, they've obviously made, and very successfully. Um, it's not something that I ever tried to do, because I, th- I, I don't know, there's the, I just can't imagine ever, ever being believable, or frankly wanting to become um, an American. No, so, um, you know, I think that's, you know, but, but, I hugely respect the, the, the careers that they have had as a result of doing that, but um, I think that's a big, I, mean, I think it's to do with your identity yeah. and who, who you are mm. and um, 
realistically, I'm not an American by any shape or form, so uh, you can play it. <laughs> I can have a go, but yeah, yeah. it's not really. Mm. I, I, I mean, I think you. I'm sure you've, you've had fun from day one. But do you feel that you want to say that you've arrived, but in in, 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 in your own personal capacity, that you feel that you've achieved a particular um, pathway in your career? I mean, does does this does this maybe really give you that? Um, in uh, yeah, it's an incredible sense of satisfaction that, mm. um, against all the odds, it, ha it has been made. Yeah, I can roll over now and say, I'm finished now, and I'm going to go. Oh, no, you can let, the garden. Let, it never feels like that. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. no. <laughs> and at the moment, what are you working on? I just, I just acted in a film with, um, called Penelope with Reese Witherspoon and Christina Ricci, which is an American comedy, playing mm. American. Mm. Um, well, they're all shot in London. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm about to do a part in a film of Irving Welsh's book, Ecstasy, oh, which we'll starts shooting this August. Okay. Yeah. And does it change? I mean, I mean, I'm sure people would perceive you, even just in, in the circle that you keep, and even when you're choosing roles, does a movie like this make a lot of people sit up and pay attention to you beyond oh, yeah, your role? Yeah. Yeah, because I think that I know from when I published a couple of books 10 years ago that that. I suppose sideway views how people see you, um, and certainly writing and directing a movie is it's a whole other department, and um, I don't know, it's difficult to quantify, but I, I just know that from the reactions that I've got, um, the kind of work I've been offered, and offered work as a director, mm. um, that there's a, you know, there's a real sea change, but I suppose in five years' time I'll be able to look back and see what it has or hasn't really changed or done. Were you equipped the most in that surprise, or even just, I mean, from a qualification point of view, yes, but were you, did you feel equipped to, to do this movie when, when, when the opportunity finally occurred? Well, I made the opportunity, so that, you know, because it was self-propelled, mm -hmm. um, it was something that, that I so wanted to do and have had to push so relentlessly hard to, to, to get it made, mm -hmm. but, um, by the time we actually started shooting on the 7th of June uh, 2004, I felt as ready as I possibly could be, um, despite the um, incompetence and intransigence of the, uh, the French producer, who nearly scuppered the whole thing just due to lack of proper preparation. Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, this was, a, this was an, an important story to tell, even if it was just on paper, uh, I think, obviously for you, the yeah. passion that drove you. Well, you've got, you know, if you, if you, I think all first films, you've, you know, you put so much into it because you've got to prove yourself as an untried, untested writer, director. Mm. Um, and unless you have a real passion for the story, it's, you couldn't sustain the, 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 um, just the sheer slog of day to day, year in, year out, for five years worth to, to keep going at it if you didn't really believe in it. Mm. Because, I mean, who, 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 who would you use, in a way, to, to almost benchmark you or to... I mean, I'm sure your, you know, your family plays a, a key role, because, as you say, in this industry being what it is, it, it, it's a, it can be quite a thankless place in, in many respects, but how do you, you know, as you do this, that you almost ask the question, you know, is this the right thing to do? Am I doing the right thing? You know, um, is, it, is, is, it, is this appropriate? Um, be it a role, or be it a movie? because you can't use the industry or even popular sentiment to, to give you that, I'm sure. I suppose, yeah, my, my immediate family is, mm. uh, is the benchmark, yeah. as you say, yeah. And has, has, that, been, has, that, been, has that been tough, I suppose, over the years? Because you haven't always worked. Uh, you know, there were times um, when, you, when you did work that you, you know... Well, I think because my wife is a, is a, a dialect coach, mm. and so she's in the industry but not she's in the backstage part of it, um, she absolutely understands what the nature of show business and an actor's life is. So that makes it much easier. And also, unlike people who actors who are married to actresses or the other way around, um, where careers never um, propel at the same speed or level, um, we at least are spared that that ego yo-yo that goes on in 
actor-actress relationships. And as far as roles that you have played, I mean, in, in, the, in the time that you that you've been in the industry, what besides making a movie, what what has been a particular highlight? Um, I don't know. I think I think more the people that I've I've worked with and met. I never look back and sort of feel nostalgic about a particular part. Um, more the friendships that I've made with actors and um, become best friends with Steve Martin, having worked with him 16 years ago. Um, so, and another great friend is Bruce Robinson, who I did two films with 20 years ago, How to Get Head and Have an Advertising oh, yes. uh, with me and I. So, it's the, it's the friendships that have come out of work rather than the actual work, because, you know, the work you do is for, you know, two or three months at most. Mm. But, you know, the friendships are the thing that sustain you. Yes, I've, I've always maintained that, even in my area, is that uh, the relationships are what, uh, you know, to me, it's what is key. Yeah. So the rest of it does come and go, uh, but uh, it's the people and what you get from them. And I'm exactly. Sure what, what you've given yeah, them. Yeah, exactly that. And, and now that you're, I mean, your daughter has a, has a cameo in, 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 in war as well. Uh -huh. In a way, I, I, I have a I have a very young five-year-old son, and I was right. thinking about that afterwards. Thinking it must be again, you always want to protect your children. You want to you know, make sure that they that they do well. And I think she played uh, she played you know, an extraordinary role. I think in that. Oh, thank you. Um, is is I mean, you would obviously always motivate your, your children to follow their dreams. Is, is, is it quite? I mean, because you've been through the mill as well. Yeah. To, um, to the Lord and go, we don't want that to happen to them. Well, you, know, not well, you so try, you try as a parent, but you know you have no control over that. Really. Yes, you know, yeah, you can only nurture and encourage them to the best of your ability. But mm. you know, finally, whether they are motivated or ambitious, mm. that's something that um, I think is in the DNA of a person. You can't really, you can, <clears throat> you can nudge them along, but. Um, People are going to do what they don't really want to do mm. if it's not their true passion. Now, with Wawa, there was obviously there were there were diaries. You've always kept a diary. Yeah. And you still do that? No. I mean, I do. Yeah. But I had I had um, decided after publishing with Nails ten years ago that I wouldn't do um, straightforward film diaries again because I just thought it would be a repetition of the same thing. Although I was asked by publishers every year to do so. Mm. Um, I think because what I thought was valid about the first guys was that you went from an actor who'd never been in a movie before, the process of getting cast and then ending up in Hollywood working with you know, the directors that I worked with. Um, so the reader therefore goes on a journey from the beginning to a kind of logical end. In the same way with the Wawa diaries, this is taking you from somebody who's never written or directed a movie before through the whole process of what is actually involved mm -hmm. in making an independent film. So, um, I knew very consciously and had told all the actors and the crew that I was going to publish a diary about the making of the movie. Um, but I keep a diary just as a, uh, a matter of habit, but mm -hmm. not with any intention of um, publishing another one. Because <laughs> I've now done this movie and I think that, you know, it's, it's dead. It, that's the story of it. Yeah, yeah, because I mean, Again, to to do such a personal movie, um, you know, or a movie of your life, yeah. um, certainly, um, you are even more aware of the role, but or, or even the characters and the, and the, the people that you, you know, the, the actors that you chose to play those particular roles. Um, right. Where I would think, with if, if you're just taking a script and you're directing it, where there isn't that that kind of connection, um, that you would be maybe less, or you'd be more, you would be open. Did you find yourself? Almost insisting that particular characters or particular personalities were had to be absolutely, you know, as you could remember them. Oh no, not 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 at all. No. You know, I kept um, all the supporting characters are amalgams and composites of people that I knew and experiences that I had. But um, I got such an uh, an extraordinary bunch of actors that mm. um, I didn't need to try and impose anything on them. And it was. It was just such a kick for me mm. to see how they interpreted their parts and to mm. you know, help them along the way with background information as much as I could give them. But um, no, I think that would be uh, then. Then you'd be moving into sort of docudrama yeah. Um, yeah. territory of mm. of trying.
trying to be accurate as though it was an historical mm. kind of document, which mm. is not. Mm. Mm. And I mean, you again, a wonderful part. I mean, yeah, really nice. Um, again, I think all credit to you, I'm sure, um, as you, when you choose to work with people or get the opportunity to work with them, must be um, great kudos, I think, just to you, to the people wanted to work with you. Yeah, no, I was, couldn't, couldn't have been better served. Yeah, it's absolutely <laughs> true. Because <laughs> I think, um, as well, it would, would, you always be your, your, your best or your worst person of, yeah. your, of your own work. Absolutely. When, when people have, you know, that, that you've worked with here in particular come along and go, I, I want to be a part of this. That would right. be hugely, um, um, well, you know, it's, it's as good as it gets. <laughs> right. Um, I know you've got a very hectic oh, schedule. Right. I don't want to take up too much more of your time. But um, as I say, you've, um, you've got a busy balance of the year. Uh, is it important to you to, to try and find a balance between not being consumed by your passion to the point that it feels like a job or any other um, for that. It feels like a job. Mm. Um, because it's especially perhaps now more so than ever because there is more work available and there is more to do and obviously there's greater expectation uh, from you because you know, as you as you go, right, um, your profile grows and with that, so it never it never feels just like a job. I've never. Um, I mean, even if I've been on things that have gone completely AWOL, like the Bruce Willis disaster, Hudson mm-hmm. Hawk, 16 years ago, um, I'm always thrilled to be employed. <laughs> um, and I've never not got a kick out of out of meeting new people and, you know, going to different places. And, you know, there, there's always something new. As much as you think that you've got a handle on one aspect of show business or the industry or how to perform or direct or write yeah. or whatever, there's, you know, I think it's a case of typically, as the older you get, the more the more you learn, the less you know. Mm-hmm. And, and you, and you, I, I see you're still doing quite, quite a bit of sort of West End. Uh, yeah, I just done a play for 160 okay. performances, so you know that was a long. Is that like a long of course? <laughs> well, no, it was a, it was extraordinary to do that after I was I hadn't done a play for 12 years, yeah. so um, I just been offered to, to um, the Monty Python musical Spamalot on Broadway. Oh, right. Um, so. And I've never done a musical before, and I can't really sing. So. <laughs> anyway, but <coughs> they need a takeover in January, so um, so I might, you know, I might do that. Yeah. I mean, clearly you find yourself um, doing doing bigger or doing things perhaps you wouldn't have considered. Oh yeah. I yeah. mean, <laughs> if opportunities come along, you can't you can't, you can't resist. I can't resist them. No. It's yeah. like going to the sweetie shop because they yeah. Well, I'll try that. <laughs> have a bit of this. It's fantastic. <laughs> Is it just while it's there? Um, you want Absolutely, to yeah. Time. There's going come a day when, you know, you just, you don't, you just don't get offers anymore. Mm-hmm. But as you said, I mean, I think your body of work, even as it currently stands, uh, if you had to start today, um, I think uh, you've served uh, not only entertainment um, in a very big way, but I oh, think it's had its been a great pleasure to actually meet you. Oh, well, thanks very much. I'm going to ask if you wouldn't mind. Yeah, sure. This is for my dear mum who lives in the town. Oh, All right, what's... My what? name's Audrey. Um, so. Oh, cheers, yeah. Thank you. When do you return home? Uh, Friday night. Okay. I'm going to Jobo tomorrow. Mm. More of the same. Right? Premier. Um, screen in Roseback on <coughs> Wednesday on Wednesday night, and um, I'm doing some more TV and radio What's stuff up there. It is, a, it is a great for you now to come back to. I mean, obviously you've come back you know, a number of times, but every yeah. time you come back, is it? Well, I come back at least once a year. Yeah. I bought a house in Cap so you know, a regular visitor. You'll bump into your leader or one of the coffee shops. Exactly. <laughs> but, uh, thank you again for your time. Oh, cheers! Thanks a lot. Oh, thank you. Thank you.